Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about Pumpkinhead. So, <clears throat> first things first, I'm going to give you all my overall opinion of the movie. And you know what? I think this is a super solid movie. It's a super solid horror movie, super solid creature feature. It's a just a pretty darn good 80s horror movie. Um, when this time when I you know rewatched it, I I enjoyed it more and I kind of appreciated it more than I have in the past. In the past, I always just thought this movie was decent. It wasn't, you know, one of my favorites. It's still not one of my favorites because, you know, there's so many good 80s horror movies. There's so many good 80s creature features. Um, so, yeah, this, this still isn't one of my all-time favorites. But I think this is an extremely solid movie. So, there's that. Um... You know, now that I gave you all my little, you know, thoughts of the movie, my my opinion of it, I'm going to jump into a little plot summary. So, at the beginning of the movie, um, you have Ed Harley, who is the main character, and he's a kid, and he sees Pumpkinhead out, out of his window, um, so that was his first interaction with Pumpkinhead. Then it fast forwards into present day and Ed Harley lives alone with his son. He has a really great relationship with his son. He owns this little convenience store. Everything is all good. And you can tell like the, the relationship between him and his son, it, it's such a a strong relationship you can tell his son means so much to him like his son is all he has we don't know if he has any other family like the the son's mother is never talked about it's just him and his son and you can tell he really like the, his son means the world to him he cares so much about his son so they're just you know running the store and then these city kids come in and you know they're drinking i think the i think the one guy with the leather jacket i think he was drinking and driving which um is so funny because in so many 80s movies people are just drinking and driving and i feel like i've said this in other videos but it's not like they had a couple of drinks and then they went driving they'll just they'll just be driving along and then they just like crack open a beer while they're driving just sip on it all nonchalant like yeah it's whatever um i love that though i think that's like super fun i mean in real life not cool but i love seeing that in all these 80s movies where they're just like sipping a beer while driving it's just, it's it's kind of funny so yeah you got this group of city kids they're drinking they bring all their dirt bikes they're just whipping their dirt bikes around racing going up these hills getting getting some air time going and uh yeah basically ed harley has to go run out his son is left alone to you know watch the store the dog gets loose um the son chases after it and he is accidentally hit by one of the kids on on one of the dirt bikes and he he doesn't make it the the kid passes away and, you know, like I said earlier, Ed Harley saw Pumpkinhead when he was a kid. He knows of the legend. It's kind of a legend around the town, but he knows firsthand he saw Pumpkinhead. He knows uh, what, you know, Pumpkinhead is summoned for. So he tracks down this old lady who, you know, she's got all kinds of, she can kind of cast spells and do all this uh, magical stuff and he's like trying to get his son resurrected but she's like yeah I can't raise the dead <laughs> sorry um, but you know I can give you this demonic uh, this I was gonna say demonic spirit 
but I can hook you up with this revenge demon and it'll kill all those kids. No problem. All you got to do, just, you know, slice your hand, sell your soul for eternity. That's that. So, you know, he does what he has to do. He summons Pumpkinhead and then Pumpkinhead is running around town, killing all the kids who were involved in the accident and killing anyone else who gets in his way. So that is the basic plot summary for you all. Now just jumping into random thoughts and stuff that I liked. Um, I thought the lighting and the atmosphere in this movie was phenomenal. Uh, there's, there's a lot of like, it, it's like, it's subtle. The lighting, it's not like neon lighting, like something like, Friday the 13th part 8 like that's that movie has great lighting too and that's a great movie but the the lighting in this is subtle but it, it kind of has like a, a a hint of color to it like but where it would still make sense like it's like a blue night but it's it's like exaggerated blue or you know there, there it'll be like a candlelit room and it, it like should have like a like a red hue to it but it'll be like I don't know, like the it, like the room will just be filled with this with this hint of red, and uh, yeah, I thought the lighting was really good, like the atmosphere. There was fog everywhere. The, most of the movie took place in this kind of like forest, because it, it, the whole movie takes place in this kind of you know small town, like country town. It's probably like somewhere in the south or something. But yeah, most of the time when people are being pursued by Pumpkinhead. It takes place in this forest and all these, like, the trees are just, you know, these, like, giant trees. Like, something from, like, Harry Potter and the, the there's, like, fog everywhere. Um, it's just, it's got a creepy vibe. It really sets the tone. You know, it's it's, it's it has a, a scary atmosphere. So, the lighting is great. The atmosphere is great. And then another... Thing that I liked in regards to like the the look of this movie is I thought the production design was pretty darn good so I thought you know Pumpkinhead's grave his burial place was really cool you had this like raised mound and then all these pumpkins but they they didn't look like normal pumpkins they looked I don't know how to describe it but they they just they were like almost like gourds they were like these really weird like dilapidated pumpkins and like I said you had those like spooky trees going on you had the fog going on it's in the graveyard the production design there was great and then the production design and all the set dressings in that old lady's house were it was it was amazing like you had all these you know melted candles and you had all these little like trinkets like these little magic trinkets little creepy stuff going on and you just had tarantulas just all kinds of tarantulas crawling around like the the set dressings in the old lady's house and all the production design stuff was top notch um i mean this kind of goes in line I, I i'm still talking about visual stuff i guess i mean the, the visual stuff in this movie was on point like everything in this movie looked really good and that's that's important, especially I feel like for a horror film, like, I feel like the look of a horror film is way more important than, like, like a comedy, like, atmosphere isn't really as important, but for a horror film, you, like, it, it needs to, like, the, the visuals need to be on point, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, moving on to, like, another visual thing, I thought the design of Pumpkinhead was so cool, like, I've always thought the design of Pumpkinhead is really cool, it's just... Like, it, it, I don't even know how they, like, how, who came up with the design, but it, I mean, it, it's amazing. He's got this long tail. He's, like, eight feet tall. Um, his, like, he has this, like, crook in his legs and his, his face. He's got, like, the fangs coming out, like, the shape of his head. Like, I just, I like creature features and monster movies and stuff like that like I just think I think Pumpkinhead is an iconic monster he just he looks like a like a demon like he's got that giant tail like I think it has like a little point at the end maybe maybe not but 
pumpkin head looks great and it's like the actual design is on point but the like the execution is really good too like all the the makeup and the practical effect and the practical effects used to make pumpkin head like it could be it, one thing if it was like a cool design on paper like they had the best sketch and it looked cool but then it looks fake or stupid on film like it looks great on film i think it was just a guy in like a suit he was probably wearing like stilts and stuff too but i mean it like the practical effects are on point for Pumpkinhead. he does not look fake he looks scary he looks amazing and i i i don't know what else to say like he like Pumpkinhead looks fantastic in this movie you know because in some of the some of the sequels he still looks good but he doesn't look as good but the the practical effects on Pumpkinhead are just are they're top tier um moving on to just a random thing that i wanted to talk about there was one kill that i really liked that the kills in this um weren't anything special but i mean i feel like the story is good in this movie and it's a unique concept and like i said the the creature itself looks really good so kills yeah, the, the, this movie doesn't have the best kills, but it doesn't really need to. Like, the kills are fine. But one kill that I really like is uh, the the one guy with the leather jacket, the kind of a-hole guy. Well, he's big time an a-hole, but I don't know. I don't know why I said he's kind of an a-hole. He's, he's an a-hole. He's, like, hitting his homies with, like, uh, like logs and, like, locking them in closets and stuff. That guy, he's, he's not cool, man. But uh, anyways... His kill is probably my favorite kill in the movie. He gets like a gun through the chest. And, you know, I'm a big Halloween 4 fan. So I was just, I was just like, man, like, that's like Halloween 4. I love that stuff when, you know, someone just, get, instead of getting shot, like, you know, you think he's just going to get shot and then he gets the gun through the chest. Like, that's awesome stuff. And, uh, I mean... This came out in 1988, Halloween 4 came out in 1988, so, I mean, everyone and, and their and their grandma was doing gun through the chest kills in 1988, but I, I'm not complaining, I'm, I'm here for it, I, they, they, need to they need to bring those back, you know, those are solid. Uh, in the next Terrifier, Art the Clown, you know, he's always shooting fools, he's got to jam a gun through someone's chest. Or maybe through their head or something. I don't know. But anyways, that was a really good kill. That was probably my favorite kill in the movie. Wanted to mention that. Give Halloween 4 a shout out. Because Halloween 4 slaps. I Man, I guess people don't even... Like, I'll, I'll talk to like people. And I, 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 I always thought like Halloween 4 was like really liked by fans of the series. But I guess like a lot of people don't like Halloween 4. Like, everyone says like the mask is bad. And they just think it's like okay. And... Most people just like Halloween 1 and 2. Like, I've always really liked Halloween 4. And I just... Uh, and, like, that ending in Halloween 4. Come on, man. But, like... Yeah, I, I'm just, like, surprised. Like, I'll just, like, talk to people, people, like, IRL. And they're like, yeah, I don't really like Halloween 4. And I'm just like, what? Are you crazy? But, hey, you know, everyone... You know, whatever floats your boat. Um, I like Halloween 5. And I'm probably the only person. So, you know... What are you going to do? Everyone has different tastes, and that's, uh, that's a, a beautiful thing. That's legit. Moving on to another random point here. Uh, th like, later on in the movie, the, the younger kid who, who kind of led Ed Harley to the old woman's little hideout, he, there's this instance where I think he's in Ed Harley's house, and there's this dog jump scare, but it, it's like you can see it coming and then you know it's not going to be anything like it's like the worst jump scare ever sometimes like a jump scare will get me and i'll be like man i feel like a gosh darn fool like i've seen five trillion horror movies and that jump st scare still got me like this i could see coming it didn't make me jump in the slightest but i just thought it was interesting because there's always like cat scares in horror movies you always like it's you always have some cat jump out um, I, th I think, what was it? Halloween 2, didn't, that, didn't they have some cat scares going on? I haven't seen Halloween 2 in a minute. I don't know. That's probably bad. I probably ruined my credibility here, but I don't have the best memory, man. I, I don't know. But, um, 
Yeah, like, I, I feel like all these horror movies, they always have cat jump scares. And then, I mean, this movie is changing the game. We got we got dog jump scares going on. I mean, we're, we're reinventing the wheel, you know? So, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I thought, hey, this is an, an important thing that I should include in my review. But, I don't know. That was just a random thing I was thinking. I was like, man, they didn't even do a cat scare. They did a dog scare. What the, what the heck, man? Dog jump scares? Like... What is this? I've never I've never seen this before in my life. Like, man, they're changing the game with this one, man. This is this is fresh, yo. They I mean, that's I mean, that's the most iconic, memorable part of the movie, that dog jump scare. That really got me going. I was like, "Ooh." I was like, "Oh, man." I had to I had to take a ooh, I had to take a breather after that one. They got me. But uh I don't know. I just <laughs> I would mention that. And then I just have a couple more things left here on my notes and then I'm going to I'm going to piece it on out. So I liked the idea of Pumpkinhead being this revenge demon. Um, I, I don't know. It was just, it was just the, the whole, like, I feel like the story in this movie was really good. Like I liked all the stuff in the beginning before, you know, stuff really went south where it was just like, you know, like the setup was cool where it was like Ed Harley as a kid seeing Pumpkinhead and then Ed Harley with his kid. Like there were some really like heartfelt moments with like him and his son and then the setup where, you know, his son unfortunately passes away and then, you know, he goes and, you know, seeks revenge with Pumpkinhead. I feel like the story was good, but like the whole idea of a, a revenge demon, like it's just... it. I don't know it just works it's just cool like even in the sequels it's cool it's like you know you always have the setup of someone being wrong someone being killed unjustly and then they summon pumpkin head and then you know this also sets up the idea where you know ed harley when he gets he gets that like pitchfork to the shoulder and then he sees that it hurts pumpkin head this sets up the the same concept for the sequels where it's like you know pretty much the only way to stop Pumpkinhead is to kill the person who summoned Pumpkinhead and I feel like it it makes it a lot scarier because you can shoot Pumpkinhead, you can burn him, you could try to blow him up you're not gonna stop him, you can't call him off, like if you're marked you're you're done and then you know you, you can't help any of these people who are marked, it's like you just gotta stay out of the way and if if you're marked like all you can do is kill the person who summoned Pumpkinhead. So I feel like that kind of like heightens the stakes, makes it scarier. That's unique. And then, I don't know, I like the whole revenge demon concept where like the person is almost like a conduit for this demon. Like, because they could have just had Pumpkinhead was just this creature walking around and the movie would still be cool because Pumpkinhead looks so cool. But uh, the fact that it's like this the person is like a vessel for pumpkin head and they summon pumpkin head based on revenge and he's this demon that you can't stop unless you kill the person I don't know I just I think it's a fresh concept and you know I don't know I feel like the, this movie overall is like a very unique movie it's just it's it definitely does its own thing so I definitely definitely wanted to mention that and before before um uh I uh, end the video. I just gotta mention a couple things that just popped in my head. I don't have them on my notes, but I just thought I'd mention it. I thought um, Lance Hendrickson did really good as Ed Harley. He was he was killing it. I really liked the stuff early on, like the kind of more heartfelt moments with him and his son. He, he, I mean, I, I feel like he did fantastic in this movie. All the kids did pretty well, and then just a shout out that the one kid who's like rocking the the bandana or whatever maybe it's not a bandana but whatever that kid is in uh, uh slumber party massacre too and i'm i'm a big fan of that movie that movie rocks so i always like watching this i'm like oh that's the guy from slumber party massacre too i don't know i just i like that actor like he's only i think he's only in like that this and i think he's in this other slasher movie what is it called like I forgot it's uh, with this like big dude with like a meat cleaver I forgot what it's called but I don't know I don't like that guy's not in a lot of stuff but I kind of like he's got like a good vibe so 
I mean, it's cool to see like random people from random other horror movies that nobody know, knows about. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, I had to give a shout shout out to Lance Hendrickson and then a shout out to the uh, Slumber Party Massacre 2 guy because he he did well too. I just I don't know. I just like that guy's vibe. He just I don't know. He's he's got a little charisma. I like his style. But yeah, had to give those last couple shout outs. And with all that being said, oh yeah, I got to give my recommendation before. I head out, so, I mean, this movie's super solid, I mean, this is, this is just, it's a, it's a solid 80s movie, it's a solid creature feature, it's a fantastic horror film, um, if you have not seen the first Pumpkinhead, you know, definitely, definitely check it out, it's definitely worth the watch, so, now that I gave you all my recommendation, I'm going to head out. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Peace.